If you use social media, you probably know that nowadays, quietly, there's a major censorship campaign taking place. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Google are removing certain content from their platforms, not because of user agreement violations, as they sometimes claim, but it is completely obvious they are controlling ideological content on behalf of establishment agendas in violation of protected free speech. It is now much more difficult to find anything unfavorable to certain government and corporate purposes online. Suddenly, out of nowhere, we are now seeing online censorship, shadow banning, demonetization, suppression and manipulation of view counts, likes, comments, sharing, and search in order to control and skew the information you will be allowed to see. Their AI algorithms do all this automatically. Amazon has openly admitted they are removing and banning whole classes of books, authors, and ideas which are opposed in any way to certain official establishment agendas. Amazon and Jeff Bezos, who enjoy multi-million dollar government security contracts to share your personal online search data, are not surprisingly serving the corrupt interests of government by banning any written material that the government asks them to ban. So drilling down on the actual censorship and the thought police media suppression, what is the common factor of the materials that are being censored and banned? People like to say that conservative views are being banned. Of course, that is unlawful, but what conservative views? If you look closely, it is clear that what is being banned is anti-war content specifically and anti-establishment content generally. As you can tell from so many headlines these days, we are being psychologically prepared for war. We are moving our military against China, Iran, Venezuela. Clearly, a major military campaign is underway. If you oppose that online, your content will be suppressed. In the late 1960s, it was the left wing that was anti-war. The left was attacked and suppressed by law enforcement, politicians, and the press. The leaders of the anti-war movements were assassinated. The FBI was complicit in this, and wars have been carried on ever since. Now, more than 50 years later, after trillions have been spent on social programs to appease the left, the left wing seems to be the much more tolerant of government agendas, even war. And the right wing, the conservatives, have now emerged as the more anti-war group. So it is now grassroots conservatives who are being censored, targeted, and harassed. It is now glaringly obvious that wars are started by the USA to seize other nations' resources, usually minerals, drugs, or oil. That has been the case in Afghanistan, Iraq, Yemen, Syria, Libya, now Venezuela. The USA is simply plundering other nations' resources under the pretense of making the world safe for democracy. With the great irony that in the case of Venezuela, the U.S. military government and media are trying to depose a democratically elected leader and install a corrupt puppet who simply declared himself to be the leader of Venezuela, a puppet who welcomes the USA into Venezuela to take over the oil industry there. There is nothing democratic about invading and looting other countries, and our government is no longer able to pretend it is doing anything different. But there is another reason why war is considered inevitable by the powers that be. The Federal Reserve note is quickly inflating to zero value, and that system of currency has caused federal, state, and local governments to become hopelessly in debt. It is a debt-based currency, essentially a Ponzi scheme, which is guaranteed to fail, guaranteed to be overprinted, overloaned, overborrowed. Everywhere from the highest levels of government to the individual private citizen, we have borrowed more than we can repay. And without repayment, the economy and currency collapse. The clock is running out on the Federal Reserve Note system right now. And the people who control that currency system are very aware of this looming crisis. There will either be an economic collapse or a currency reset in which the worthless currency is replaced by something else. Either way, the users of the Federal Reserve notes will lose 
most of their wealth. The holders of those dollars will lose their wealth. This will be a political disaster, and the only way to camouflage that politically is to launch a major war and blame the economic problems on the war when the problems are without question actually caused originally by the adoption of debt-based currency, in our case, the Federal Reserve Note. When Federal Reserve Notes are created, <clears throat> they're created and loaned at interest. But with debt-based currency, it is not possible to print enough money to pay off the principal and the interest, because every new dollar printed has additional interest due. So eventually the currency system simply collapses under the excess burdens of interest and debt. That is where the Federal Reserve note is right now. While Facebook and Twitter ban Alex Jones and Infowars for spreading this bad news, they never have any valid allegation that Jones is falsely reporting anything. While the USA works to extradite and persecute Julian Assange, they never have any valid allegation that Assange falsely reported anything. This is not false reporting that is being banned. It is truth. It is anti-war content. It is anti-establishment content. The many journalists who have now been banned, fired, imprisoned, or killed did not falsely report anything. They made the mistake of reporting certain facts which exposed the crimes of government and corporate officials. And the worst crimes of government and corporate officials are the crimes of making war. Of course, you can handle anything the press has to say. There's no reason to keep information from you. There's only one reason for banning and censoring the press and those who engage in free speech. That reason is that powerful people want to lie to you. The people who control media want to control what you see, know, and think. They must suppress truth. They must suppress free speech. They must suppress investigation and reporting of what they are doing. And they must repeat lies over and over in the media until people start to believe the lies. You and I are being pushed into war. And it takes a lot of propaganda and media control to do that. Every time in history there was any kind of book-burning campaign, a war followed. And before every major war, there has been some kind of book-burning, persecution of journalists, suppression of free speech, control of the media. They always go together. Sometimes it has included the rounding up and murder of intellectuals, anyone who might offer information or insight which would oppose official agendas. The only way that something as horrific as war can be perpetrated is if information and public opinion is strictly controlled. That is exactly what we are seeing now on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google, Instagram, not to mention CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and Washington Post, the rest of the establishment media. Everywhere there should be free expression of opinions and thought, we are now seeing ridiculous nonsensical campaigns of censorship and smearing of those who oppose war and who challenge official narratives. The fact that our supposedly open social network platforms, who are supposed to simply host whatever we want to say, have now joined the control of content just like the mainstream media should tell us all we need to know about the lack of integrity and independence of our giant online media companies. You are being propagandized. The messages that reach you now are being tightly controlled. The people who are trying to bring you the truth and alternative information are being ruthlessly suppressed and attacked while official narratives are being sold to you in a relentless stream of mainstream media propaganda in the headlines, the reports, the programs, the commercials, the news stories, and the official announcements. So what can be done? Do not automatically accept the narratives that tell us war is coming. Actively search for truth and alternative sources of facts. Look deeply into the personal motives, the financial and pol political incentives of those who are telling us there must be war. Look objectively at whether war is really in anyone's best interests. During major wars, millions of people starve from the loss of commercial infrastructure. Millions of people are killed. 
Millions of people are displaced and torn from their homes as refugees. In the past wars, the United States has been largely spared attack from the outside. Next time, that will not be the case. Drones, missiles, EMP attacks can hit any square inch of the United States, and there is little that could be done to prevent that. North America can now be destroyed. We can be killed in our homes, and not one enemy soldier needs to land on our shores to do it. War is not something that will happen over there. War will come to you, and you will feel it, and it will be very painful for you and your loved ones. Even if a planet-killing nuclear exchange can be averted, your lifestyle and life plans will be fully sacrificed for the war effort. You will have no choice. But war is nothing more than a tool of politics. There has never been such a thing as a necessary war. The war makers cause wars out of choice, out of greed, out of psych psychopathic desire to kill and control populations, to increase and secure their own personal power and security, to impose their will on all of society. None of that is necessary or natural. When insane people can sell insane ideas, war happens. All we need to do is recognize that war is never a solution to anything, unless you consider force, murder, and destruction to be a solution. War is the failure of solutions. War is the failure of reason and negotiation and communication. War is the failure of sanity. And as we're seeing it, it starts with censorship and the persecution of journalists, authors, bloggers, and thinkers. It is not easy to drum up a war frenzy, but that is what you are supposed to be part of right now. And you are not to be allowed to see any contrary ideas. We must do more than lament the loss of free speech and the arrest and murders of a host of journalists and writers. We must protect free speech, journalism, and truth by creating and supporting alternative media anywhere in any way we can. We must bypass the propaganda. We must utilize the technologies that now exist to make sure that all ideas can reach us and we can reach them. We must be constantly suspicious of the narratives echoing from all of our media outlets, mainstream, independent, and alternative. But we must insist that we have access to diverse information. We must search for the truth wherever that leads us. And we must make ourselves heard when we say that war is not an answer, not a solution, not an option if we are to have a peaceful and prosperous world.